In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read the parable of the prodigal son during the pre-Lenten period because of one of its central themes. This central theme, which we'll be dis- we will be discussing today, is repentance. Through the example of the prodigal son, as well as the compassionate love of the father, the church seeks to inspire and guide us to true repentance, to the sacrament of holy confession, and to a new life in Christ. Great Lent is not simply a period of external practices, such as strict fasting from foods, but it is above all an opportunity for prayer, inward reflection, confession of transgressions, conversion of the heart, and renewal of the mind. That is what metania, above face or change of mind, means. About face, excuse me. In the teachings of our Lord, repentance is connected with joy. It is not considered to be doom and gloom. When the prodigal son returned to his father's house, he provided an occasion for great rejoicing. His father, who was all the while waiting for him, ran out to greet him embraced, kissed him, and immediately called for a celebration. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Get the prized calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with the feast. This was all said by the loving father. When the older brother approached the house in the evening, he heard dancing and music from within. This celebration offended him. What was the reason for all of the rejoicing? The father's words expressed it most eloquently. My son was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Our relationship with God is like that. When we are away from him, he yearns for our return and waits for us. When we return to him, we give him great joy. Usually we do not associate joy with repentance. We find it painful to admit our sins, faults, and wrongdoings. But we should know that to God, repentance is a great moment of joy because it marks the return of a son or daughter to the loving and waiting Father. Repentance is not a religious duty to be fulfilled for the sake of God. Repentance is for us, you and me. It is the recognition of our unworthiness, the sincere confession of sins, and the complete trust in his grace. We certainly need God's grace. Remember these words. Father, I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. For his part, the Father is not interested in dealing with us in a stern fashion or even a humiliating fashion, but rather only in receiving us, embracing us, kissing us, 
and rejoicing with us. All of heaven rejoices for the return of a lost son or daughter. I would like to recite a prayer that has been formulated from various hymns that we heard this morning in the matin service. If you would all please just lower your heads. Let us behold the power of the mystery of salvation. When the prodigal departed from sin and returned to his father's house, his loving father came out to meet him and kissed him. He restored to the prodigal the signs of his former glory. Let our lives then be worthy of the loving Father who has offered the Savior as sacrifice to us. Let us pray to him as the prodigal son, I come to you, merciful God. I have wasted my whole life in a foreign land and I have scattered the wealth which you gave to me. Receive me in repentance, O Father, and have mercy upon me. Amen. Now please rise.